Today in the world of murders at Carla Manor spoilers, we get a bomby dragon, some repeatable cloaking, and our traditional wacky red enchantment from the set, along with a whole bunch more, which means we should probably break it down. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Safrada Live, and it's time for another daily dose of Murders at Carla Manor spoilers. So we're slowly creeping towards the end of spoiler season. Tomorrow's Commander Precon Day, full set on Friday, but we still have a ton of stuff to talk about today, which means we should probably jump right into it. Start talking sweet new Murders at Carla Manor cards. Before we do, a couple of quick reminders. First, you should keep up on all the latest previews throughout the day over at mtgpreviews.com. Second, if you need any of these cards, you can snag them from our awesome sponsor, Card Kingdom, over at cardkingdom.com slash mtggoldfish. Anyway, let's talk Murders at Garlove Manor. First up today, we get a Red Mythic Dragon in Incinerator of the Guilty. So Incinerator of the Guilty, 6 minutes 6 6 Flying Trample. When it deals combat damage to a player, you may collect Evidence X. When you do, it deals X damage to each creature and each Planeswalker that player controls. If this card looks familiar... It's basically 2024 Balefire Dragon. Balefire Dragon, a little more mana, doesn't have trample, only deals damage equal to the amount of damage it dealt to the player. This is the upgraded version. You get trample, it costs less mana, you can scale the damage if you have a full graveyard, and honestly, we need an updated Balefire Dragon. Balefire Dragon never really made it as a competitive card. It'll be interesting to see if Incinerator of the Guilty can actually do better than its predecessor. So as far as Commander goes. I think this card will be relatively popular. People still play Balefire Dragon in Commander, and this is going to be mostly a better version. Uh, it's either for Dragon decks, or decks that can cheat it into play, like Ilhog or Perforos, but I think if you're playing like Zillerin of the Claw, or Lathless, or Kalia, or Sign of the Red Dragon, decks like that, you're probably going to play this in your deck as like an on-tribe card, or an on-theme card that can also be a one-sided Wrath to at least one player. Uh, it is worth pointing out it's only going to deal damage to the creatures and planeswalkers that the player that the dragon dealt damage to control. So it's not a full wrath in commander, but you can wrath one person by cheating this into play, assuming you have a full graveyard, which is a pretty powerful effect. I'm intrigued by the possibility of this card in standard. It seems like throughout this spoiler season, we've been talking a lot about a gruel haste style deck because Anzarag, the mole god, is so incredibly strong if you can haste it in. Incinerator works really well with haste as well. The biggest draw back of this card is uh, to get its ability you got to get in combat damage but it doesn't have haste so you're gonna have to play this and wait for a turn for it to lose summoning sickness and then try to attack which gives your opponent a window to deal with this card but if you can haste this in off of like reckless storm seeker rabbit battery halana alina partners invigorating hot springs then this card is ridiculous right it comes down it has trample so it's gonna get through other flyers it's got a big body as long as it gets in at least one damage you just exile your graveyard and get rid of your opponent's entire board creature Creatures and Planeswalkers included, so I think this could be the top end of some sort of Gruul, Anzarog, Haste, Stompy style deck. Like I said before, it's also a pretty good cheat into play target. I'm really not 100% sure if this can work in like Timeless. We do have Sneak Attack in Timeless. We played a Sneak Attack deck not that long ago. This is a pretty reasonable thing to cheat into play. It's like a Wrath that you can cheat into play. The question is going to be, is your graveyard going to be full? It's a really cute second Sneak Attack target if somehow you need to. In Sneak Attack, one and that thing's gonna sacrifice go to the graveyard then you can sneak attack the incinerator in the next turn exile your first thing but really if you need two sneak attacks, are you really building a good sneak attack deck? Usually you want to win when you sneak attack or pull super far ahead with one activation. It's also really sweet if you can reanimate it with haste. Like we have Olivia Crimson Bride in standard right now, which reanimates something tapped in attacking. So you can like uh, play your Olivia, have Incinerator of the Guilty in the graveyard, get back your Incinerator, hit, exile some stuff, wrath your opponent's board, or maybe like Whip of Erebos and Commander, Torn of Souls, reanimate something with haste. So there are shenanigans for this card. So... I think this card, certainly a huge upgrade over Balefire Dragon. If you're playing Balefire Dragon, I think you either play this instead, or you just play both of them. And I think it might be enough of an upgrade that we could actually make this work in standard. It's going to be close. Like I said, it is six mana. It doesn't have haste. But if you can build around that and make sure you're getting in that attack with a full graveyard, this is actually an incredibly powerful effect. We also got a really wonky equipment in Cryptic Coast. So, so Cryptico, three-man equipment, 
When it ETBs you, cloak the top card of your library, then attach Cryptic Coat to it. So you're going to have a face down 2-2 two, two, War 2 creature that can be flip face up if it's a creature for its mana cost. And then it gives that equipped creature plus 1 plus 0 and can't be blocked. So really, for 3 mana, you're getting a 3-2 unblockable War 2 creature with the upside of maybe being able to flip it up. And then you can pay 2 to bounce it back to your hand, which of course means you can play it again and manifest something else. The first thing that you cloak is still going to be on the battlefield, right? You're just going to lose the unblockability you're gonna lose the plus one plus zero but you can just keep bouncing this every turn to generate card advantage no really weird roundabout way also worth noting no equip cost on cryptic Cove, so you can't just move it around on the battlefield if you want to put it on something new you're gonna to have to bounce it back to your hand cloak something else hope that that's what you want to get it on so definitely a unique equipment as far as comparisons it's kind of like a way better cloud form we saw when we had actual manifest back during dragons of tarkir era uh, stuff like cloud form that just manifests the top card of your library the upside of cryptic code of course is the repeatability the fact that you can keep bouncing this and do it again and again and again you're also getting unblockability which is kind of nice you can chip in for damage i can even see a comparison to like batter skull how batter skull makes a 4-4 four, four lifelinker when it comes into play thanks to living weapon and then you can always bounce it back to your hand for three replay it again and that's proven to be very very powerful and we're doing this attached to essentially like a, a latch seer a three power unblockable creature Feature. So the repeatability of this is going to be really, really huge. That might be enough to make it a competitive card, at least in standard. It's probably going to be at its best in decks that really embrace the cloaking. So we have cards like Atrata and Vanifar, which really want to just be cloaking stuff because uh, Atrata can flip them face up. Vanifar wants you to play a bunch of like blink effects so you can manifest or cloak something big and then flip it face up. So maybe there's a deck that's like Cryptic Cloak with Atrata or Vanifar and then using like Unyielding Gatekeeper or Twinning Twins to be able to flip up the big things that you cloak into play and then you can just cryptic cloak again and keep the fun going so there's probably some sort of deck there also if you want to go really deep there's a way you can like pseudo combo with this card so i'm thinking like all right we got forensic engineer which reduces the cost of artifacts activated abilities by one so that means it's only one mana to return cryptic cloak to our hand there's also many cards like in standard right now we have enthusiastic mechanoth that just reduces the cost of artifacts that we cast so with a couple of these, we could get the cost of casting Cryptic Cloak down to one mana. So it'd be one to cast and then one to bounce back to our hand. If you throw in like a SROM or something that draws cards when you're casting equipment, there's a lot of synergies there. I don't know if this would be like a super competitive plan, but it would be pretty sweet for like two mana. You'd be able to cloak the top card of your library and draw a card with SROM and just keep that going. In standard, it could work in the Simic Cookies stack. Simic Cookies cares about artifacts being cast. This is a way you can generate some card advantage, a way you can ship in for even more damage unfortunately you're not actually getting an artifact creature out of it but if you manifest or cloak an artifact creature you can flip it up and get the artifact out of it so it could fit there as well it's also intriguing in some sort of control deck we talked earlier about batter skull and one of the places that batter skull saw the most play is in control style decks where you get into play and then during your opponent's turn you can leave up your mana for your counter spells your removal spells and then you can always bounce batter skull back to your hand if your opponent has a way to interact interact with it cryptic coat is kind of similar right you can play this get this unblockable creature to chip in for damage leave up your mana during your opponent's turn if you don't need to counter or remove something then just bounce it back to your hand and play it again the next turn to generate more value do it again so i could see it showing up in some sort of like weird control deck some honey jin style mono blue deck where this is another evasive threat that really rewards you for leaving a mana during your opponent's turn as far as commander you're pretty much looking for blue blaze equipment decks right the fact that you can't equip this is kind of awkward so it's not going to be as good in the like i'm moving my equipment around to build this voltron threat style decks like not going to work really well there because you can't just like stick this on the threat that you want to be unblockable uh, but if you're playing like galea kindler of hope anisha titsuko Cherix, any of these equipment decks that are in blue i think this is in the conversation it's just a way to generate a bunch of card advantage by repeatedly casting this and synergizing with your commander so cryptic go i really like this card it's a really unique equipment just because you can't equip it so it really doesn't work like a traditional equipment but i think it's actually a pretty powerful and certainly a super fun card we also got a card that i do not know what to make of which is expedited inheritance so two mana double red enchantment it says whenever a creature is dealt damage its controller may exile that many cards from the top of their library they may play those cards until the end of their next turn so this card is super wonky 
because it's symmetrical. So this works for your opponent and for you. If it only affected our creatures, it would be a pretty intriguing source of card advantage. Like you play this, right? And you attack with your creatures. If your opponent blocks, your creatures take damage. You generate card advantage. You cast more stuff. The problem with Expedited Inheritance is this is doing it for your opponent's creatures as well. Doubly problematic is it's a May ability. My first thought when I saw this card is, wow, you could probably just like mill someone out with a Blasphemous Act or a Star of Extinction. Maybe play like some hunted creatures to give your opponent's creatures. Get down the inheritance. Blasphemous Act. Your opponent's going to exile like a hundred cards. They lose the game. The problem is it's a May ability. So you're never going to actually mill your opponent out. If it's going to be a negative for your opponent, they're just like, no, thank you. I don't want to do that. So I guess what you'd have to do is like use this with your own creatures. I think it is like technically possible to build this crazy combo deck. I'm thinking kind of like Cheerios Kabold combo. So imagine you have like a bunch of Mem Knights and Kabolds of Care Keeps and Ornithopters, all these free creatures. So you play all these free creatures, you get down your expedited inheritance, then you cast the Blasphemous Act to Wrath your board. You're going to get to draw literally your entire deck, right? You're going to draw 13 times. I don't even know, like 10 or something. So you draw your entire deck or exile your entire deck. And then you just like cast some Lotus Petals and Thassa's Oracle to win the game. I don't think this would be like a super competitive plan, but that's the best I've come up with is a way to like combo off with this card because I'm fully convinced that you can't really play this card fairly, right? Like the fact that it's symmetrical means it's going to benefit your opponents just as much as it benefits you. I guess you could try to combo it with Dranith Magistrate and like play this and be like, ha you can't play any of the cards that you exiled, which would be kind of funny but then if the Dranith Magistrate dies, things go really bad really quickly. You could also try to like pseudo combo with Prosper, I guess, where you like get down Expedited Inheritance, then you Pyrohemia, let's say, to deal one damage to each creature and each player. Uh, that's going to exile cards equal to the number of creatures you control. And then if you cast those cards, you'll get some treasures with Prosper, which will make enough mana that you can Pyrohemia again and try to like chain it together. Maybe you gotta make like Prosper indestructible so it doesn't die to Pyrohemia. I'm very curious, how do you combo with this card? What is your plan? I feel like, so if this card's gonna see play, it's a million percent because there's a combo that can break it. And I haven't found that perfect combo yet. We've talked about a couple of janky ones, some cool synergies, but there's gotta be something better, right? So this is a card, do not play it fairly. Don't just jam this in your mono red deck or whatever, your Rakdos deck. You're gonna be really, really sad because it's gonna benefit your opponent just as much as it benefits you. Maybe even more in some cases, because if you're tapping out to like, play this they're going to get access to their mana first to cast the cards off of this so it's way too risky to play fairly but i can't shake the feeling seeing how cheap this is it's only two mana and the fact that it's at mythic Maybe Watsy knows something that I don't. And there is like some really broken combo for this card. So if you have ideas of how we can actually break Expedited Inheritance, make sure to let me know in the comments because I think there's got to be a way to do it. I just haven't figured it out yet. We also got Yaris Roar of the Gods. And this card is kind of wild. So four mana, four, four legendary Centaur Druid. Says other creatures you control have haste. Whenever one or more face down creatures you control, deal combat damage to a player, draw a card, and whenever a face down creature you control dies, if it's a permanent, return it to the battlefield face down under its owner's control, then flip it face up. So this card has a lot going on. So I think it's designed mostly to be like a morph slash cloak slash disguise commander, like a face down commander. I think that's the main goal of this card, but I think this card could actually have some 60 card ramifications. So the first thing I thought is this card is absolutely wild with pyrotechnic performer right so pyrotechnic performer that's the two drop disguise thing that when it or another creature you control is turned face up the creature deals damage equal to its power to each opponent so if you can get down yaris and a bunch of face down creatures maybe just playing them naturally or cryptic cloaking them into play and then maybe use brothers at end to like kill your board all of your face down things are going to die then they're going to come into play face down then they're going to flip face up all of them will trigger your pyrotechnic performer if you have enough face down creatures, you probably just win the game on the spot, right? All the damage from the performer should just kill your opponent. So that's one possibility. Maybe we actually have like a face down deck in standard with this being an absurd payoff, not only a combo piece, but it also just lets you fight through your opponent's removal. Like, of course, your opponent can just kill the Yaris and then a plan falls apart. But with Yaris out, if they kill any of your face down stuff, it's just going to come back into play and flip face up anyway. So that's one possibility. We've also been talking about some sort of 
Gruul Haystack with Anzarog, Incinerator of the Guilty. Yaros just giving everything haste seems perfect for the deck. Another way you can just be hasting in your mole gods and your huge dragons. Also, might be really good in Bard class in like Pioneer slash Historic or even Modern. A lot of times you see in the Bard class deck, they're often playing like a single copy of Samet just to give your other creatures haste. I think that Yaros is just better at that role, right? It does everything you want Samet to do, except it's one less mana. So I think this becomes an easy, like, one of in Bard class decks. There's also infinite combo potential for this card. So this card goes infinite with Ash Cloud Phoenix. Ash Cloud Phoenix, this weird old morph card from Cons of Tarkir, a four mana four one flyer that says when it dies, return it to the battlefield face down, and then you can morph it for six mana. And when it's turned face up, it deals two damage to each player. So the idea is you have your Yaros, right? You have your Ash Cloud Phoenix, and you have a sack outlet like Goblin Bombardment. So you sacrifice your Ash Cloud Phoenix. It can be face down, doesn't really matter. So you sacrifice it, you get a damage with the Goblin Bombardment. When it dies, if it's face down, Yaros is gonna put it back into play and then flip it face up. That'll hit each player for two. Now you have a face up Ash Cloud Phoenix. You can sack it to the Goblin Bombardment. Thanks to Ash Cloud Phoenix's ability, now it's gonna come back into play face down. And then you can do the same thing again. Sack the face down Phoenix. It's gonna come back into play face up. You're getting damage with Goblin Bombardment. Pretty much just win the game on the spot. Assuming your life total is high enough that your opponent's gonna die from the combination of Ash Cloud plus Bombardment damage before you die to Ash Cloud's damage. If you're worried about the damage, you can also like throw a Blood Artist into the mix or something. You can also use this combo to generate a ton of mana. I guess it's not fully infinite mana because eventually Phoenix is gonna burn you out, but hopefully you burn your opponents out first. But if you replace the uh, the Goblin Bombardment with something like Ashnod's Altar, Phyrexian Altar, you can sacrifice the Phoenix a bunch of times, probably burn the table out of the game, make enough mana that you should be able to win the game somehow. So if you're playing this in Commander, outside of just being a like sweet morph style commander, it also has some infinite combos built in. Talking about Sweet Morph Style Commander, if you build this in Commander, I think you just try to protect it, make it indestructible, give it hexproof, whatever, and then play as many morph things as possible. Like being able to morph in a Chroma Angel of Fury and then have it die and come back as a 6-6 six, six flying, trampling, protection from white and blue with fire breathing, that's kind of insane. And there's actually a lot of good morph and manifest cards in red and green, Imperial Hellkite, Whisperwood Elemental, Fortune Thief, Crows and Cloud Shaper, I guess is really big. Uh, so you can do some cool shenanigans there. So I actually think this will be pretty powerful as a Gruel Morph Commander that also has some weird infinite combo potential built in. It also synergizes really well with like Yodora Grave Gardener when a non-token creature you control dies. Return to the battlefield face down under its owner's control is a forest. Uh, so it is going to put it as a land, but if you have a way to turn your lands into creatures, which there's many of those, then you get a like pseudo infinite loop going because then if the creature dies, it'll come back into play thanks to Yara's face up, come face down and then flip face up. So you just keep looping looping through this stuff. There's also some face down payoffs in green left over from comms of dark gear, like obscuring ether. Just make sure face down creatures cost one less to cast. So that fits naturally in the Yaros deck as well. So Yaros, really good commander card, but I think it might actually be a card that can make some waves in constructed as well, either in standard in that gruel stompy deck or in some sort of weird morph infinite combo deck. We also got 10th district hero and this card I'm not sure if this is like one of the most busted aggro cards I've seen or if it's absolutely unplayable. So a two mana two three human. You can pay one in a white and collect evidence of two to have it become a four four vigilant human detective. And then once it's a detective, you can pay three, collect four evidence, and it becomes a legendary creature named Mulvina Starwall Hero with base power and toughness of five five that gives your other creatures indestructible. So Death Theorister Hero, it compares to Figure of Destinies as a level, or maybe even more exactly to Surge Engine, because it's a two mana Figure of Destiny style card. The question for this card is, can the decks that'll want it, which is probably like white-based aggro decks, human decks, can you get evidence in the graveyard consistently enough to make its ability work? If it wasn't for collecting evidence, like just this card with its abilities without the evidence collection, 
I think would be pretty busted. You play it on turn two as a two, three, it does get cut down, which is annoying, but it doesn't get played with fired. The next turn, it becomes a four, four. Then the next turn, five, five, and your other stuff is indestructible. That is a very flexible card. The question is going to be, if you're playing like humans, can you actually get the cards in the graveyard? And I think the answer is you can in some sort of like blue or blue, white aggro deck, but you're probably going to have to rebuild. I don't think you can just jam this in the like copper coat Vanguard, Adeline humans deck. I don't think you're going to get enough evidence in the graveyard but if you're willing to build around it a little bit stuff like Rafine's informant ledger shredder a good way to get cards in the graveyard uh, map tokens from spyglass siren uh, or the vehicle that can also let you get cards into the graveyard because this is unlike a lot of the collect evidence cards it's low evidence numbers two and four and you only have to do it once right uh, once you do it once you never need to collect that evidence again so it's not repeatable in any way so it seems realistic that if you're willing to put some of these looting conniving exploring style cards into your deck you should be able to collect enough evidence to pull this off relatively quickly also like absurd with rafine that might be the biggest vote in favor of this card uh, rafine's conniving it easily fills the graveyard and turns this on and it even curves perfectly with 10th district hero so i kind of think this could have a shot in some numbers in the rafine esper decks because the reward is pretty high right you're almost getting like a mini avison angel of hope like a much much cheaper version that you could have on the battlefield by turn four to make all your other creatures indestructible especially if you can get like a mithril code or some way to make 10th district hero indestructible then you have the full avison although it is worth pointing out that that last ability probably a bit of a trap in standard thanks to sunfall and leyline binding and the wandering emperor and farewell there's just so much exile based removal the indestructible yeah it's like kind of beneficial but not nearly as beneficial as it would be in most standard formats across magic's history so to have Trister hero I'm going to go with this card is really good. I've been going back and forth. The collect evidence thing. It's been the mechanic that I have the hardest time to evaluate in this set. We know Delve is busted, but Delve that requires mana values. How much harder is that going to make it? But I'm going to go with 10th District Hero is a new aggro staple. Despite the drawbacks, just because it's a two drop that can get big very quickly. And it has some relevant creature types or a relevant creature type. Detective, I guess, could be a relevant creature type at some point. But I'm going to say this card is actually pretty good just keep in mind you might need to build around it a touch or play it in like the rafine deck or something to have a plan for getting cards in your graveyard i'm not sure you can just jam it in like the normal white weenie deck is you're gonna have enough evidence to collect that i'm not 100 percent sure we also got the maltese falcon the coveted falcon a three mana one four with flying and it says when it attacks gain control of target permanent you own but don't control it disguises for two and when it's Turn face up, target opponent gains control of any number of target permanents you control. Draw a card for each one they gain of control of this way. So this card is intriguing. So obviously it's anti-fill tech and commander. If you have someone in your playgroup who's like Brewer's Kitchen and just always going to be trying to steal your stuff with agent of treacheries and blatant thieveries and mass manipulations, Covenant Falcon's pretty sweet there, right? It's not quite homeward path, but it's like homeward path at home where uh, if you get agent of treachery, you get in an attack with this, you steal your thing back and you feel a little bit better about the situation. So that's one half of this card is basically being homeward path on a body but really slow because you only get one each turn the other possibility is using this as a donate card so we've seen some really sweet janky brews over the years using like harmless offering a donate bizarre trader to try to give away demonic packs or immortal coils or nine lives uh, these cards that can make you die if they're on your side of the battlefield at the right time coveted falcons another way to do this i'm not sure if it's the best way to do it like if i'm just trying to give you a demonic pact what's the upside of playing a coveted falcon that i need to play face to down and then flip face up for five total mana over just playing a harmless offering a donate or something so i'm not sure it's actually better than the other options in that role but it is another way to do it it also is worth mentioning cards like harmless offering donate only give away one card so if you somehow build a deck that wants to be giving your opponent a ton of different things uh, then coveted falcon has some upside because not only are you being, being able to give your opponent a ton of things you're also able to kind of do like a, a mini zedru thing we're able to draw a bunch of cards Cards along the way i think the other possibility in standard with this card is we're seeing more and more theft effects being printed into standard and actually seeing play in standard like decadent dragon steals cards from your opponent's deck and sees play 
siphon insight has seen some play we're now getting outrageous robbery maybe one of the better of these cards that we've seen so far so the more wizards prints these i'm going to steal cards from your deck in fact the more we want wizards to print cards like coveted falcon that offer counterplay to this play style so i really like that this card exists i'm not sure that it really has a role outside of being like a zedru style card where it's going to be a nice little backup zedru zedru the trick is zedru outside of giving your opponents really mean things is just playing symmetrical things right like if you play a rest in peace it's going to do its job no matter who controls it so you can give it away with coveted falcon you don't lose any value and you get to draw a card and you're turning on your zedru so it seems really sweet with that style of play so i love that this card exists i'm just not sure what its role is outside of being a funny like demonic pack combo piece or uh hate against field x in commander which is actually pretty relevant on commander clash this season moving into the realm of lower rarity cards i want to mention case of the shattered pack so two mana colorless enchantment it's a case it says when it enters a battlefield search your library for a basic land card reveal and put it in your hand then shuffle to solve it you need five colors among permanents you control and then once it's solved at the beginning of combat on your turn target creature you control gains flying double strike and vigilance so actually a pretty big reward if you have a reasonably sized creature so this card is kind of like mycosynth wellspring we've seen some cards that are just two mana etb let you get a land see some play like these effects are usually like okay in specific decks so the floor on this card is reasonable the upside is if you're a five color deck and can solve this or maybe you're going full on ley line of the guild packed memes then the solve part of this card is really scary like sending your biggest creature to the air and giving it double strike and vigilance that's gonna let you close out the game very very quickly so in some sort of weird five color aggro deck i could actually see this card serving a purpose you need to fix your mana by getting the basic of the color that you're missing you should be able to solve it pretty quickly honestly ley line of the guild, guild pack solves this on turn two if you want to go full on meme mode and then you just smash your opponent to death with a massive creature to close out the game finally today we got a bunch of other lower rarity stuff stuff that's gonna have a role in limited maybe some fringe constructed stuff but you can check it all out over at mtgpreviews.com anyway that brings us to the end of our daily murders at garlov manor spoilers for today oh yeah i also wanted to mention uh yesterday we got ravnica clue edition spoilers uh that's all commander stuff so tomer did a video covering it over on the mtg goldfish commander channel if you haven't seen it yet definitely just check it out there's some pretty interesting cards there like a new lanas anyway thanks for watching today everyone i hope you enjoyed it and I'll be back tomorrow with even more murders at Carla Manor spoilers. So until then, have an amazing day, and I will talk to you soon. Looking for even more magic? Well, you can check out yesterday's spoiler video here, or maybe the Against the Odds, where we tried to combo off with Intruder Alarm and Timeless.